look at it again. <laughs> we finished our Aki. You can have so much pressure from this brain bleed that it herniates your brain through that little hole. What's up, YouTube? It is Monday, 7.42 in the morning, a new week. I'm tired. Um, I probably didn't do as much as I wanted to this weekend, but that's all right. I woke up pretty early this morning. Again, you guys probably at this point know how I do. Got through some of my Anki. I only have 15 or so minutes until class starts, so I gotta get some food in my system. But this week is gonna be pretty hectic. I have a ton going on, so I'm excited to bring you guys along for the ride. It's one of the hardest weeks in anatomy. We're finishing up with the perineum and moving up to the head and the neck, which historically is the most difficult part of the course. So we'll see how that goes. You guys will see as well. Um, I'm sure the Anki cars are gonna pile up, but let me get some food in my system, get ready for class, and I'll see y'all in a bit. As you're looking at these scans and you're finding pathology, um, and if you run into something that might be a candidate for a percutaneous biopsy. At the level of the cervix, it divides into ascending branch that goes up there and gives you, gives you... So this is um, going to be the topic today. We're going to look at the vessels. But we just finished our lecture, so we have our kind of ARS questions, so our kind of clicker questions, not graded or anything more, just to see where we're at. We have that in a few minutes. And then I have to go to dissection lab. Actually, hold on, let me change my perspective on things. I get to go to dissection lab um, after the basic doctoring meeting. And again, that's where we kind of get to get our hands dirty. We go through lecture, learning the structures that we're covering over the day. And then we go to the dissection lab in our small groups and kind of get to explore ourselves. So then that's after at 2.30. Um, and then I will be coming home and preparing for one of the most difficult lectures for tomorrow, um, the beginning of head and neck. So Lots of work to do. I will check in with you guys later, but pray for your boy, because this Monday is hitting me. So y'all know I'm out here in Rochester, Minnesota. Already need the sweater and the jacket. Man, it's cold. But we are on our way to lab. It's Tuesday, y'all. It is Tuesday, 4.53 in the morning. I have about 550 or so Anki cards that I want to get done before class. We're going into the hardest lecture probably of this anatomy block today, so um, there's that. Also, y'all, Madison got me these blue light glasses. I've never worn glasses before. I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Does anybody else also put their hood up when they want to get to work? Kind of like hoodie mellow or something? Does anybody just kind of get in their zone with their head up? Let me know. I need to get to work, y'all. I'm playing. It's too early for all this. And just like that, we are done with this Anki in the morning. It is 7.30. I got about 30 minutes before class starts and I'm finished with my Anki. Blaze, bro, we finished our Anki. We finished our Anki. We just finished the first part of our lecture, kind of the gross anatomy part, and we're going to move on into the radiology section here in about 10 minutes or so. Um, I'm actually using this 10 minutes to be as efficient as possible. I'm trying to prepare for tomorrow's lecture now, which I usually don't do until the end of the day, but I have some fun things going on uh, this evening. I'm speaking with the MAPS chapter at North Carolina a and this evening and also the presidential debate. So I want to be as efficient as I can with this time. All right, I'm actually going to walk you guys through one of my, maybe these ARS questions that we have going on. So you can see the question in the image below. Which of the following structures is most likely compromised by the circle abnormality? So this is probably representing the parotid gland. And so I'm thinking about things that could be compromised by maybe some swelling in this area. I'm thinking about things relative to the parotid gland, which would be this facial nerve. I'm gonna go A. Y'all, it is a busy day. We just finished our ARS questions um, at noon, and we had a meeting that started at noon, so actually most of us are coming in here a little late. Um, but I think I just wanna show you guys everything that's going on, because some days we'll literally be back to back to back to back. Um, today we're having a meeting going over um, Epic Access, which is basically access to patient records and things like that, and it's important to know all of the information and do's and don'ts <laughs> regarding Epic Access. So as medical students, especially when we're gonna be involved in research and other things and just, you know, looking at patients' charts and things like that, we have to make sure we know what is appropriate, what's not appropriate uh, in, with regards to how we use Epic. So we have a meeting with that, then we have a meeting afterwards, 
um, for another hour and then I have to sprint up to lab. So um, busy day, but sometimes it'd be like that. Pray for your boy. All right, guys, so we just got out of lab. It is 3.38. Uh, lab was tough. Um, we're doing the superficial face, so there's a ton of just musculature that's responsible for facial expressions, um, you know, the neurovascular bundles and things like that in the face are a little more difficult to kind of grasp than, than kind of other structures in the body, like in the arm or the leg or the whatever. So it was a little, a little tough, but um, so was the pelvis to start, and over a few reps, over a few times, it became easier, so I'm confident that that's how the face is gonna be as well. I have 20 minutes now before I am going, and I'm speaking at a super cool MAPS um, meeting for North Carolina a and State. So I'm super excited to do that, but I live about 15 minutes away. Meeting starts in 20 minutes, so I gotta go. I can go ahead. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is J.R. Smith. Um, I went to college at uh, Duke, so familiar with the North Carolina area. I'm currently a first year medical student at the Mayo Clinic up in Rochester, Minnesota. All right, guys, it is about 5.40. I just finished um, that event by North Carolina A&T. Um, that was awesome. It was their MAPS program, uh, and it, we just got to go over a ton of interesting and fun stuff that I love talking about, like what to do in pre-med and the application process and the transition from undergrad to medical school, all that good stuff, and that was awesome. I also got to see a fellow YouTuber, Derek Medhead. Make sure you check out the homie. It was nice he was able to um, be there as well, which I didn't know he was gonna be on this talk too. So that was awesome. Um, now I have to do a little bit of studying. I have to do a little more prep for tomorrow. I didn't get to finish that all throughout the day, but that's all right, because it's only 5.40, and we're just gonna keep pushing throughout this hectic and busy Tuesday. All right, y'all, keep it going. Wednesday, y'all. Hump day. 4.45 in the morning. 600 Anki cards. I'm tired, but we're going to be all right. We're going to get through it. Keep pushing. Weekend is closer than it was yesterday. <laughs> I got to try to keep myself motivated. Now, y'all, let's get to this grind. The facial nerve, uh, and as it goes into its branches, as it goes through the parotid gland. Getting ready for the live dissection. This is a little before 10 a.m. Already on my second cup of caffeine. Is it justified if my first cup was at like 5 a.m.? Is that is that justified? Let me know. <laughs> I'm struggling, y'all. This hump day is, is hitting me. It is hitting me. <sighs> it's so early still, too. I have so much more to do today. <sighs> Such is life. Keep it pushing. Find your motivation, find your why. We gonna get through it together. We gonna get through it together, y'all. Y'all, they switching it up on us. Look how crazy this is. The location where the supers come together and when these bones fuse. Can you feel that? Mr. Slumpy, you can't just sleep all day. You're making me tired. I don't get to sleep. Just finished lecture. You can see he's knocked out, making me jealous. I'm about to take a practice practical. So um, every few weeks we have practical practices that we have where basically the TAs go into the cadaver lab and they pin certain structures on the cadaver um, and we'll say either, you know, what muscle is this or what innervates this or, you know, what artery is this, et cetera. And so we have a few practice practicals um, that kind of get us ready for the final practical. And this one is going over the thorax and the abdomen. So not my most fun area of the body, but, uh, it's due Friday, so it's currently Wednesday. I just want to get it done um, because the rest of the week I have other things that I have to do. So once this is done, it'll be nice to be done with it. Hopefully I do well. Oh, you're here. <laughs> I didn't even know you were here. It's Friday Eve. <laughs> it's 441 in the morning. Um, I actually have a little more energy than I have the past few days. I just know it's Friday Eve. My body's like getting a little excited about it. Uh, tons of Anki cards this morning. Again, they're piling up, but a little more energy. Waking up a little earlier and earlier so I can get these done. And then I'll catch up on the sleep during the weekend. But let's get to work, y'all. 
morning Anki grind is over. It is 7.14 in the morning. Um, I have about 45 minutes until class starts and I'm putting together a video um, for people who are interviewing here at Mayo to kind of give you an idea of what a day in the life is like. So just including a ton of film from my classmates and things like studying, but also things that are fun, you know, that we're doing. And so I'm putting together a video for that. So on this downtime, I have about 45 minutes. I'm gonna work on this, try to make this as good as I can, and then we're gonna get to class. So the marathon continues, keep working. Y'all time is flying by, probably worked too long on the video. Still haven't got my food. I need to eat before lecture starts because it's about four hours of that. So now we're in rush mode. <sighs> Be like that sometimes. Um, understand the hemorrhages between the different layers of the meninges. Um, Dr. One of the big reasons we use non-pen for S10 CT is not necessarily to identify a stroke, but it's to make sure that there is no intracranial hemorrhage because these patients are treated in a very well-defined area where the brain has atrophied away, is replaced by fluid compatible with a chronic input. Best group at it again. <laughs> Best group. Celebrating some stuff, not done with anatomy, but close. <laughs> Guys, it's Friday. It's Friday, 4.50 in the morning. We made it. Oh my goodness, I have that kind of like exhausted but excited that it's Friday kind of thing going on. Before I forget about my interesting or cool thing that I learned this week, so you guys know I'm going over the skull and the brain um, and the head and neck area in anatomy. Well, if you guys remember that glowing skull that I showed you, my professor basically put a light inside of an empty skull and he was using that to show us one of the weakest parts of the skull. It's this terion area. It's just where four parts of the skull come together. And it's just a very weak area. Well, there's a very important artery that runs right behind that weak area of the skull. Um, it's the middle meningeal artery. But what's interesting is that if you got a fracture in this area of the skull, and again, it's a super weak area, so fractures can be prevalent. Like if you got hit with a baseball or something in this part of the skull, you would fracture it and then you would rupture the artery that's sitting right behind it, that middle meningeal artery. Now what happens when you rupture an artery in the brain, you get a bleed. So in this case, you would get an epidural hemorrhage, which is just a brain bleed on the outside of the dura between the dura and the skull. And what's crazy is that there's no expansion that can happen in the skull, right? The skull is gonna be a fixed area. So when, this, when the brain is bleeding, it's basically causing so much pressure to push down on the brain. And what's interesting is all this pressure can actually force a hernia from your brain through the foramen magnum, the big hole in your skull that the spinal cord runs through. You can have so much pressure from this brain bleed that it herniates your brain through that little hole. Now you wouldn't probably be alive to experience too much of that at that point, but I thought that was extremely interesting and just shows how important it is to make sure that we catch these brain bleeds because we don't want any brain hernias. We don't want that. Guys, I'm in my live discussion right now and my professor is literally the goat of anatomy and he just showed us a procedure that is literally named after him. <laughs> um, that is goals. Uh, it is ridiculous and I just feel so honored to be at a program where the professors and the faculty and all of these consultants are literally the top of their fields and creating and innovating new techniques to address certain things and getting procedures named after themselves. So I got to watch my professor perform a procedure that's named after himself. If that's not motivating, I don't know what is. All right guys, it is officially the end of Friday. I'm about to head to bed, catch up on some sleep. I'm gonna have to rejuvenate this weekend because next week isn't looking any less busy. <laughs> so I'm gonna get some sleep, try to get as much rest as I can. I hope you all enjoyed this week. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, and if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, tap that bell, new videos every week, and you're not gonna wanna miss one. Some weeks are like this and they're crazy busy, but thank you guys for rocking it out with me. And of course, as always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys next time. Love me.